um, just to preface all of this, maybe by saying that kind of we will obviously be kind of providing uh, quite a bit of training on original and anything else related to Canvas, Zoom, all the different kind of tell tools. Um, once kind of more um, staff members are kind of returned as part of semester one. Um, this is maybe just to give a brief overview to original to anyone interested or to anyone who might be using it at the moment to correct exams. Um, our intention for today is to maybe just do a quick demo of the different features in original and to identify how it can be used and show people how to kind of get set up and get using it. Um, but primarily kind of our intention today would be to try and kind of take any questions people might have. Um, so, like I said, I'll demonstrate the different features and how to use the tool, but the intention would be to kind of try and answer people's questions in as much as possible. So there will be time at the end to deal with kind of individual questions. If you do have questions as I'm going through the um, session today, though, do please feel free to throw it into the Q&A area. Um, and also, if you would like to make any comments or anything, um, feel free to put any points into the chat area. And if I don't get to your questions during this session, we will kind of set aside time at the end to have a chat about stuff in more detail. So this is the agenda for the session, and I'm just going to kind of power through it. Um, in terms of kind of what original is, basically it is replaced to turn it in in Canvas and in MTU. Um, so Canvas is now turned off. Maybe just to mention on this that turn it in we're required to kind of, I'm sure as many of you would be aware, we're required to tender for a certain software after a certain amount of time. So we were required to tender for anti-plagiarism software. Turnitin did not enter into that process. So regardless of the tender process, there was no way to renew with them. So original is the tool which has come along to replace Turnitin. Um, it provides indications of detected plagiarism like with Turnitin, but there's a number of additional features to original which we're hoping will be useful to MTU Cork staff. And that includes, you know, detection of unusual use of characters, formatting, even people's writing style. And the other big advantage we found with original is that it's more deeply integrated into Canvas than Turnitin. So that means that hopefully um, the process of using original will be kind of more straightforward and kind of more streamlined for staff and students that we'll be able to provide better support compared to Turnitin, which is quite a different interface on and so forth for Canva than Canvas. Um, and so on and so forth. Um, it also supports the sharing and the adjustment of plagiarism findings by staff. So staff members can actually adjust what, it, like in turn it in, okay, this is definitely plagiarism, this is most certainly not plagiarism, so on and so forth. And that kind of refl is reflected in the similarity score. And original has a number of kind of features in beta, which look quite good in terms of identification of sources in other languages, differences in user writing style, so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump straight into the process of how to use the tool and we'll start by looking at how to create an original assignment. So as I mentioned, it's a tool which is quite integrated into the kind of Canvas system, uh, far more integrated than Turnitin was. So the basic process for creating an original assignment is basically you create a normal Canvas assignment. So I'm going to go into my Canvas module, click on assignments and click on new assignment. I'm going to give this a name. So we'll call this test original assignment September. Um, and I'm going to leave all these details. For the submission type for original, you want to set it to online and you want to have either a text entry or I would say more preferably a file upload. Um, obviously, if it's no submission, students won't be submitting. And if it's on paper, they're not going to be giving anything. So um, for original to work, it has to be a file upload or a text entry. You know, there's, it's, there's no point in having an original thing for a website URL or for student annotation or media recordings because those aren't really comparable the way a file upload or a text entry would be. So when you set the submission type to this, what will appear down the page a bit here is this option for plagiarism review. And all you need to do is change that from none to original. That will bring up one or two additional features here. So anonymous basically means kind of whether you want to be able to um, view which students work you're, um, you're viewing. So all the anonymous setting does, if it's ticked, is hide, you know, uh, it, it hides the student name from you. And if you want to, you can select do not save documents submitted to this assignment in ERCONT. And all that means is if you remember what turn it in, 
when a student submits a paper to a Turnitin assignment, the student's work is kind of added to this kind of repository um, that Turnitin draws from. So for example, if I, as a year three student, I'm attempting to upload the same assignment that um, you know, a, a student in the same course did the previous year, Turnitin will catch that. By default, original will kind of add, will kind of do that. So it will kind of add MTU student work to the kind of MTU database or kind of repository uh, against which work is compared. If you want to though, you can turn that off by clicking here. You also have the option down the page on when you want to show the similarity report to students. So it can be immediately. And obviously that will be useful if let's say you want to give students the opportunity to, you know, if they're submitting something to check um, what kind of plagiarism is being detected in their work. So they can, if they want to, for example, re-upload it. Um, you can set it to after the assignment is graded. So that means that kind of the, um, the plagiarism detection will only be available to students after you've given them their marks and feedback. So that is kind of a more um, limited route, I guess, in terms of, you know, it's kind of removing the ability for students to be able to kind of have a second kind of go, you know, it's removing the ability for them to, um, to submit get an idea of what kind of plagiarism is kind of showing up and kind of resubmit. This basically means they won't have the opportunity to resubmit or else after the due date. Um, and again, the due date in Canvas is kind of the deadline. So in that instance, it would be the case that a student submits. Um, after the due date passes, they see, okay, this is showing up as 20% plagiarized. So, you know, if you want to, you can allow them to resubmit uh, as a late submission. Um, so those are the options really in terms of showing the report or else you never showed the plagiarism detection score to the students. So that's pretty much it. In terms of kind of the process, again, it's kind of pretty much the exact same as setting up a regular um, Canvas assignment. The only difference is that kind of, again, it has to be a text entry or a file upload. And when you select those, you simply ch change the plagiarism review to original. For the most part, I would suggest that these boxes don't need to be ticked. So you don't need to worry about either of those. When you show the report to students is entirely up to the individual lecturer's preference. I suppose the big difference really is if you want the student to have the opportunity to, um, to uh, submit something, get the plagiarism score, and then kind of uh, adjust or edit and resubmit, you would set it to immediately. If you don't want to give students that option, you would set it to pretty much any of the other three or if you don't want to see them to ever see the plagiarism detection score, you just press never. But when all of that, you can simply save and publish. It makes the assignment available. And if we briefly go into the student view, the big addition here is when they click start assignment and they upload the file, there is a little tick box here, which just uh, the student is required to tick, which indicates that the, uh, the assignment submission is their, um, excuse me, the assignment submission is my own original work. Now I can see that Neve has a question. Is there a limit to how many times they can submit and view score? Um, the limit for that Neve, um, if you just bear with me two seconds, is tied to the actual Canvas assignment. So for example, if um, I decide, okay, I'm only gonna let students upload once or maybe twice, that is the amount of times that they can kind of resubmit and view the score. Does that make sense, Neve? So again, it's kind of, it's another indication that kind of original is very, very tied into Canvas. It's very kind of deeply integrated in Canvas. It's essentially a Canvas assignment just with a couple of um, additional kind of settings, which is a bit of a different from Turnitin, which was a different interface, had different sometimes competing settings with Canvas assignment, so on and so forth. Now, the other thing which I'll just mention briefly, just in case it's of use to anyone, is the process of changing a Turnitin assignment in Canvas to an original assignment in Canvas is very straightforward as well. Now, as I mentioned, Turnitin is turned off um, if you have a Turnitin assignment and a student has submitted to it already, there's no need to worry. Canvas will retain the student submissions, so nothing will be lost. But let's say if I imported from a, an assignment in from a previous module and that assignment was a Turnitin assignment, what we can do uh, in order to adjust this is very simply, we can go to the assignments area, we can click on the edit option for the, uh, for the Turnitin assignment, from here, we simply click on more options. And all we need to do then is, if you remember for Turnitin assignments, those were the submission type was external tool and the Turnitin URL was inside here. So all we need to do here is simply change it to online, file upload or text entry, 
and then the exact same process that we did before. And that is all that is required to change a Turnitin assignment into an original assignment. So that's quite a straightforward process. And like I said, um, you know, regardless of whether Turnitin is turned in or off, on or off, um, if the student has submitted to the Turnitin assignment, their work should be retained. So after we submit against a, um, after students submit to an original assignment, you can get the plagiarism detection score again kind of quite integrated into Canvas, the same way you would normally view uh, student results against the Canvas assignment. You simply go into the assignment, you click on Speed Grader, and what that will do is we'll open up Speed Grader, and you'll notice that there is an additional kind of item over here in the right-hand column. So that then provides an in the uh, result of the plagiarism detection. Now, this is something that I uploaded, obviously, from uh, an existing source. So the plagiarism detection is very high. So again, after students have submitted, you simply go into the speed grader. If the student's work is kind of in still in process, as in if original is still kind of analyzing it, you'll see a little timer icon here. But what will happen is that kind of, you know, over uh, the course of an hour or two, that will, uh, the timer icon will change into an actual score. And you can view the kind of detailed results of that by simply clicking on that score. So if I click on this, that will then bring me to the original interface and I can see kind of a detailed analysis of the, um, of the uh, student's uh, plagiarism detection score. So, because this is obviously quite kind of high, and again, the way you can view move through the different students, you simply do as you normally would through a um, through a uh, 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 the arrow or the drop down up in the top right corner of speed grader. And what you can do as well is if there are any difficulties, if you want to kind of you know um, if the original report isn't going through for any reason, or if there are any difficulties with it, there is going to be an option here to resubmit to original. And when we click on that, we see here that kind of, like I mentioned, the, uh, the score has changed to this little timer icon, and it's just identifying that the submission is pending. So once that has worked kind of through, that timer icon will change to the uh, plagiarism detection score. Um, and like I mentioned, we can view the, plagiar the plagiarism detection report by just clicking on the, uh, on the little kind of score icon. So I'm just going to move from a very kind of high scoring document to a more uh, general kind of document. Um, when you first land on the original report, um, what you will see is something like this. I'm just gonna jump back into this. Sorry, bear with me two seconds. What you will see is something like this. So this gives an initial, the analysis overview gives an initial indication of the, um, I suppose the amount of plagiarism which has been detected. And you can see here that kind of, essentially this is kind of just a color coding of the different pages. This is a five page document or a five page student submission. So we can see here, obviously it looks like there's been a lot of plagiarism in page one, two, less in page three and page four. If the, um, if the student submission has a lot of pages, you can go to the analysis overview and you can click view all pages and that will give you kind of, you know, pages, uh, all of the different pages listed in the student kind of report. If I want to, what I can do is I can click on any of the individual pages and that will give me a quick update on kind of um, what plagiarism was detected and where that plagiarism appears to be coming from. So for example, on page one, we can see that kind of, okay, there is a matching block here that has high similarity of content with Wikipedia and that this kind of the potential plagiarism detected is up to 1,593 words. So I can do that for you know, the different pages if I just wanna get a quick uh, overview of the kind of findings. And that is a useful way of being able to um, quickly identify, okay, it looks like there's a lot of plagiarism happening on pages one and two. There's a small bit on here on page three. So if I click on that, that is obviously a different source. It's only 53 words. And this is where it looks to be kind of brought from. For all of those, I can also click on view details. And what that will do is it will bring me to this space where I get kind of a side-by-side -side comparison 
of the uh, student work, the submitted document, and the matching text. So this is the matching text. This is where the matching text appears to be coming from. So one way of viewing the student work in the analysis report is to simply click on the pages, identify, let's say, large kind of sections where plagiarism might be happening, and you can view details to kind of get more information on that. Alternatively, what you can do is you can click on, let's say, findings or on view the entire document. And that brings you to essentially the same kind of space. But what I can do here using the tabs is I can view the findings. What that means is every instance of plagiarism detection, I can kind of go through those kind of one by one. So if I click on findings, I'm going to see, OK, there's this is one of 12 instances of plagiarism detection. If I want to, I can see the student work and the comparative matching text. And when I'm happy with that, I can click on next highlight. That brings me to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, so on and so forth. So findings is one way of just working through it on a kind of on a step by step kind of approach. If I want to, I can view sources and that gives me an indication of where potentially detected plagiarism has been kind of drawn from. And I can also click here to view the entire document. And that basically just gives me all of the students kind of content along with kind of individual kind of points where plagiarism has been detected. And I can click on these icons on the right hand side to get more kind of details. So for example, we can see here, okay, the first page looks like it has a load of uh, plagiarism. Um, if I click on the icon, I'm going to see, again, this is the same information that we were looking at earlier. It's just going to show me here's what the student submission has. Here is where matching text could have been detected. And here at the end of the page, is where it was brought from. So that those are the different ways in which I can kind of, let's say, move through the document and identify um, where is potential plagiarism been detected and um, what source has it been brought from. Now, the other thing that I can do in this is that I can adjust the findings for these different kind of elements um, as I'm going through them. So let's say just for the sake of argument, okay, I will go into the entire document and let's say towards the base, um, I've identified, okay, um, I can see here that this is just a reference. So if I click on this, I can see, okay, this is a reference. I don't think this really counts as plagiarism. So what I can do here is I can click on the option here to include in analysis. Now, the current plagiarism detection score is 79%. If I say, okay, this doesn't really count as plagiarism, I can click on that to turn it off. And we can see here, it's kind of, there's no more kind of orange highlight for this and the plagiarism detection score has dropped down to 78. If I want to do the same, let's say for the first page where there's kind of a high kind of amount of content, I can turn off, include an analysis, and the plagiarism detection score drops down to 28. So in this way, we can identify, okay, if something is kind of plagiarized work, um, we can leave it in. If something is not plagiarized, um, then we can turn it off and that will reduce the similarity score, similarity score excuse me, accordingly. Now, um, there is also within the kind of findings area and within the entire document, a couple of options up here. What this will do is it will identify for quotes. If this is turned on, it means that uh, uh, um, statements which are in quotes will be counted um, in the plagiarism detection. So that is something you can turn on or off. The same with brackets. So for example, if there, uh, if you, do not want to include, um, let's say, any of the student content, which is in brackets as kind of potential plagiarism. You can simply leave that turned off and that will do, excuse me, the same thing. Um, the detailed text differences basically determines if originals should include general or specific material as plagiarism detection or not. So that really is just a way of trying to, um, a way of deciding um, how detailed the kind of plagiarism detection should be. Another useful feature within original is the ability to turn off particular sources. Now, where this might kind of occur is, for example, if there is, if students are submitting work to you that you've already given them kind of a template for, it might show up that kind of um, certain, um, certain uh, uh, 
you know, there, there might be repeated elements between all student submissions and original might interpret this as plagiarism detection. So if you want students to have a very um, specific kind of introduction or table of contents or kind of referencing system or so on and so forth, it might be the case that, you know, plagiarism detection is being detected, but it's just a common template that you would have given students. And a useful feature within original is the ability to go into sources and to turn off particular sources for the students. So for example, within here, if you know MTU Cork was showing up as a source, and that would refer to you know kind of other students who are submitting um, to the MTU Canvas instance, what you can do if you so wish is you can um, basically click on for each of the different sources, like I'm just going to do with Wikipedia here, you can click on the arrow icon in here. And if you want to, you can basically just turn off this particular source as a resource. And if I turn that off and I can just hit cancel there, what that will do is basically it will identify to original. OK, any other instances of plagiarism detection from this particular source, forget about them. They're not plagiarism detection. Don't worry about them. And as you'll see, that will kind of bring down the similarity score quite a bit. Um, if there was any kind of individual, um, uh, if there was any kind of individual um, differences, um, you can kind of go back in and turn these on or off as required. And there is also the option, if you see here, for alternative, excuse me, alternative sources, which is basically just kind of, um, you know, additional instances or additional kind of sources. So even if I'm turning this off, I might say, okay, well, I still want to keep in level three. which refers to a, a particular kind of additional instance where the kind of material has been uh, uh, has been detected from. Um, Olivia asks for sources change that would need to be changed through each individual student then as you correct. That is correct, Olivia. Um, now what you can do, um, what you can do in the back end of original is ident is provide particular templates that basically original will kind of use to avoid plagiarism detection for specific um, for specific elements. But for the most part, yes, if you are viewing a student work and let's say there are kind of, let's say a number of students submit against a particular assignment and you find that kind of the original is picking up some of their work is overlapping. All you need to do is kind of from here, go into view the entire document, go into sources and just quickly turn this off. And that then will kind of turn off the um, the uh, that particular source as a as a source of plagiarism detection. I suppose one of the key considerations as well, and this is something which we obviously would have mentioned quite a bit when we were talking about turn it in, is it is kind of I think important to bear in mind that um, all of um, you know the findings of turn it in, the findings of original, they aren't definite detection of plagiarism. Um, rather, they're an indication of plagiarism, which might be occurring. So on that basis, and we would have always kind of presented this caveat with turn it in as well, it is important to maybe, you know, even briefly look at the student's work in terms of, um, you know, instead of just kind of assuming, okay, well, 79% of this is definitely plagiarized, to be able to look at the student's work and to be able to try and identify um, additional, you know, any any instances where um, plagiarism detection has been kind of falsely picked up on. Um, if there are any suggestions as well, like obviously this is quite a new tool. So if you do have suggestions for improvements, please do feel free to share those with us and we can pass those on uh, up the line to original. Um, Vincent raises a question. Can you submit a file to original without using Canvas, say a student who emails you a file, perhaps by setting up a test assignment in my sandbox module. Also, I saw a download icon on the original page. Does this allow you to download the similarity report? Hi, Vincent. So yes, um, basically we would recommend, and this is something we're working with our original on at the moment, but something which we would suggest is that, you know, if you do have, if you want to um, submit a file to original, um, let's say on behalf of a student, probably the best thing to do is to set up a test assignment in your sandbox, mo sandbox module as you recommended, Vincent. So to just go into your sandbox, which only you have access to, 
set up an original assignment, submit the student kind of work and kind of view the plagiarism report based on that. Um, to the second part of your question in terms of a download icon, that is correct. So within this kind of um, original report, there is also the option to click here on this arrow icon. And what that will do is it will um, download a PDF of the, um, of the, uh, the plagiarism detection report and you can open that then uh, in order to view the um, the findings and it is presented a bit like this in addition to that there is also this kind of reset icon what that will do is it will basically kind of reset the report status so if you if let's say if we have made any changes let's say we've turned off particular sources or we've identified certain kind of elements aren't plagiarism this will basically kind of bring it back to the state we kind of came across it uh first so you can see there it it brings the plagiarism detection score back to 79 percent um i'm not going to spend too much time on them but just one or two other kind of features which original provides obviously detection of plagiarism is kind of the main one but there are a number of kind of pretty cool features over on the um, over on the left hand kind of column here. Um, what you can do here is you can look at warnings and what that does is it identifies any kind of unusual um, any kind of unusual um, uh, presentation of kind of content um, in the uh, in the um, in the plagiarism report. So, for example, one thing which students might do, not MTU students, of course, but um, one thing which some students might do in the states, for example, is um, they might instead of let's say typing out particular words, they might, as a way of kind of avoiding plagiarism detection system, they might kind of use underscores or they might use X's, as is the case here, to kind of construct sentences as a way of um, as a way of fooling basically plagiarism detection. So original has the capacity to pick up on anything like that and to flag it as potential kind of um, not exact plagiarism detection, but something kind of strange going on. Additional elements might include suspicious use of characters or symbols. Um, uh, yeah, so um, there's a number of different kind of ways in which uh, plagiarism, or not plagiarism detection, but some original would be able to identify, okay, something unusual is going on here with the student's work. Um, what is also in beta mode is kind of translation detection. So if a student, let's say, takes a source or a paper in a foreign language and translates it into English, original has, the, as again, as a way of trying to avoid plagiarism detection systems, uh, original has the ability to pick up on that. And it also has the ability to, ident to do something of an analysis on the writing style. And that is a way of identifying, let's say, okay, most of the document is composed in this particular um, format in terms of writing. Um, here is where we've identified certain sections of it where the type of writing, the writing style is quite different. Now, both of those are in uh, beta mode, which means they're not kind of 100% fully released or kind of are still in kind of some form of testing phase. But again, potentially useful features just as a way of ensuring that kind of work is checked as thoroughly as possible and as a way of combating any kind of tips or tricks um, some have identified to try and fool these kind of plagiarism and detection systems. Um, Olivia is original asks is original training for students obligatory or will lecturers need to understand need to ensure they understand how it works um, for the most part I suppose in a practical level Olivia there isn't really kind of huge requirements for students at least for submitting kind of work to um, receive training on it um, so if a student um, wants to submit against you know they don't need to know how the system works to be able to submit they just as we identified earlier you know, select that tick box that says, I agree that this work is my own, but we will be making uh, resources available to students on how to interpret the analysis overview report. Um, but for the most part, I guess it really is a tool which is kind of maybe more for lectures to make the decision on what level of plagiarism is acceptable or sorry, not what level of plagiarism is acceptable, but kind of as a, as a way for lectures to review student work with a view to plagiarism detection um, but yeah, we will be making kind of resources available to students, Olivia, so that if they do want to, let's say, try and interpret the um, plagiarism detection report, there will be some kind of guidelines for them on how to do just that. But for the most part, it is 
primarily a tool for lectures um, and yeah, uh, a resource for lectures to, to kind of help them um, navigate student work. So in terms of the demonstration, how to create an assignment, how to access reports, how to kind of look at the analysis report in depth, certain considerations may be just worth bearing in mind. And some of you may already have experienced this. Currently, email has a habit of sending a lot of emails to you to inform you when a document has been submitted, when the similarity report has been completed. We're in the process of working with original to turn these off for MTU staff. Um, over time, you can decide yourself how many or how little emails you want to receive but we're aware that people's inboxes are very busy. So at the moment, we're in the process of basically turning those off and staff can turn those back on as they wish. But I would say in general, everything is going to be available via Canvas. So we don't really think that kind of uh, staff need to be getting bombarded with emails. Um, and we're, hope and we're hoping to have that kind of fixed over the next couple of days. Um, as I mentioned before, it's a potential plagiarism detection tool. It is important maybe to not take um, the scores presented in original as like absolute. Um, it's important to for staff to try and look at the results to determine whether it is plagiarism, actual plagiarism or not. And you can adjust that yourself to raise or lower the overall similarity score. But for the most part, I would say, you know, like I mentioned earlier, when I said it's kind of a tool for staff, it's maybe something for, you know, staff to kind of make their own decisions around. So, for example, I would say, you know, if a student is if a student's work is showing up a high plagiarism detection score, um, I would suggest that. Um, uh, sorry, if a student's work is showing up with a high plagiarism detection score, but you're confident that their work is not kind of excessively plagiarized you know, I wouldn't go to the trouble of trying to adjust it so it's perfect for the student. The important thing is that you can make a decision yourself on, okay, look, this is clearly not plagiarized. Their work is acceptable. I'm going to give them their grades and feedback. In terms of multiple submissions, um, it might be the case that a student would submit multiple drafts of an assignment via Canvas. Um, when this happens in original, it identify it, it has a mechanism to avoid self plagiarism. So if I submit my work and then I kind of resubmit it through Canvas, and you know for the most part the submission is the same, Original will detect that okay this is Dara submitting the same work to the same assignment. So I'm not going to count the first submission as um, as a a potential kind of source of plagiarism, but. If I was to submit using a different email address or using a different account in Canvas, then it can bring up difficulties. Now, that second scenario obviously is something we're not envisaging, but maybe just to be aware that it is um, it is a possibility. Um, key to this is really just checking the analysis report. Um, you can also turn off the MTU source, and there is also an option within Original where if you know if Original identifies okay, this work is very similar to another uh, student's work or to um, something which was submitted, it is possible to, um, it is it will flag that in the analysis report and you can kind of uh, turn that on or off as you wish. Um, and finally, the question about uploading on behalf of a student, um, Vincent had that question earlier and the main recommendation we would say is to simply set up the assignment in a sandbox or test module and upload the student work there. So just before we move on to support, I'm just going to answer one or two of the questions that I see coming in. Um, Bridget asks, in terms of turning on or off sources, will the MTU sources provide details of original author it's coming from the repository, e.g. if you were asking students to submit a draft assignment before final submission, can you tell from the source detail who the original author is, whether or not it's a student's own previous draft versus a classmate's work. And yes, you can do that, Bridget. Um, as part of the process for using original, there is a setting available in the back end to identify the level, I guess, of metadata associated with, um, with kind of findings. So it is certainly possible. We don't have an instance of it here because like this report and the other reports I have are, uh, are mainly kind of content is mainly drawn from the web. Um, but, you know, in terms of identifying the source, it is possible to kind of gather more details on um, on the, uh, excuse me, on the uh, the uh, source of the potential plagiarism. 
and kind of get information. It's something we can certainly investigate further. It's kind of something we can ask original about. Um, so you can kind of access that meta metadata as far as I'm aware, but I'll check that further and um, include kind of information on that, obviously in our help articles and so on and so forth. Um, Angus asks, can original check if an assignment was submitted last year or previously? So I think that's maybe related to the question that Bridget had, Angus. Um, we'll check that for you. The degree to which it identifies um, this is this source relates to, you know, uh, an MTU student. This is the student's name. This is the student's information. This is when it was submitted. Um, there is some element of that kind of which can be supported but I'm not entirely sure to what degree it is. It's definitely something we can follow up with original. I guess the, the difficulty there potentially is um, student privacy on some level. So to what degree, um, you know, considerations would have to come in in terms of, you know, let's say me having access to, uh, you know, information which is potentially inappropriate in terms of what student, what year, so on and so forth. So it's something we can ask original about, but we're kind of conscious that might be something we'll we potentially have to discuss with, I don't know, uh, MTU um, kind of management, just in terms of how much or how little information can kind of reasonably be made available. So that is something we'll investigate further and provide more information on in our kind of supporting resources and help and so on and so forth. In terms of support for original, there is um, uh, uh, an email uh, support line and there is also a phone number, which is Swedish, but they are English speaking. So you can email support at original.com if you have any difficulties or you can also um, ring the phone number there. Also, if you're ever in doubt or can have any difficulties accessing those within the analysis report, there is this icon over here on the right top right corner um, and what you can do there is that will bring up a kind of an interactive tour, which will kind of explain the different sections of the analysis report. So if you ever have any difficulties or kind of aren't sure of how to navigate this, you can just click on that help icon up here and that will kind of walk you through all the different parts of the analysis report. Also, if you click on the profile item here, I would say for the most part, you can ignore most of these settings, but there is the option here for support. And that will bring you to the original support page where you can access the email, the phone number, uh, you can fill in a form, so on and so forth. And there's FAQs and guides and tutorials. And if you want to as well, apart from support, there is also a help option. If you click on that, basically, it'll give you an, a PDF of the analysis report. So if you ever find yourself in any way stuck or confused uh, in the use of um, uh, original or the analysis report or anything at all. There's a number of kind of options there from a kind of guided tour through it uh, to the help option, which is the kind of PDF. And also the, uh, you can access the support page in order to view, um, in order to uh, access the uh, support email, support phone number, direct form, so on and so forth. In addition to this, we also have a range of help articles up on our tell kind of knowledge base. So there's a section there for original and that is information on how to create a report, accessing the results, the analysis report, adjusting the analysis report, so on and so forth. So look, all that is left um, in terms of the session today is just to thank everyone for coming. If anyone does have any outstanding questions that they would like to ask, more than happy to take those now. Um, I'm just going to turn off my mic for a little bit and shut up. And if you do have any questions, please do throw them into the Q&A area or feel free to raise your hand or enter something into the chat. So one question from Bridget is if it has a feedback studio feature similar to Turnitin. So it doesn't, Bridget, but the intention is that basically SpeedGrader provides all of the functionality that that Turnitin Feedback Studio did. So the benefit of this really is that um, instead of having Turnitin Feedback Studio and SpeedGrader and um, uh, others, um, you can basically kind of use Turnitin to kind of provide those same features. Or excuse me, you can use uh, SpeedGrader in Canvas to provide those same features. So if I want to give students any feedback in particular, like I would like I would have done in the Turnitin Feedback Studio, I can use all of the different tools available here to give students feedback. 
um, I can, there is also a feature within um, SpeedGrader, um, which allows me to um, provide pr uh, a new feature, which allows me to create this kind of library of um, comments that I can add into a student's work. So for example, if for ex I'm gonna, I find myself giving the same kind of feedback again and again and again, I can basically create kind of comments. So let's say, yeah, good introduction. Um, if I'm gonna be saying the same things again against students, I can simply bring that up, click on that and throw it into the overall feedback space as a way of kind of um, presenting, kind of repeating information here. So um, one of the advantages we would see with original basically is that the Turnitin system and the Turnitin Feedback Studio had a lot of kind of conflicting kind of resources to the resources available in Canvas. Um, yeah, the idea here really is that kind of, because it's more integrated, it's a much simpler process to be able to give um, feedback and marks through uh, SpeedGrader and then for, if you want to include plagiarism detection, you just turn on original as part of a Canvas assignment and hop into the analysis report as you wish. Did, um, did anyone else have any other questions? And I would suggest if, if you don't have any questions, maybe just give me a no into the chat area and um, just, just as a way of us uh, saving anyone kind of hanging around unnecessarily. Okay, great. Like I mentioned, um, we will be um, providing additional training in relation to original kind of once semester one is kind of up and going um, in a more kind of uh, official formal capacity. So this certainly won't be your last chance to ask any questions in relation to this or to this won't be the only kind of training session we'll be giving. Um, all that's left to do so otherwise is just say thank you very much everyone for your time and for coming along today. And um, I'm sure we'll be talking to you very soon over the next um, coming weeks. So hope everyone has a good um, start of semester and we'll talk to you again soon.